How's it going everyone? This is John from The Drone Life here, and today we're going to be talking about infrared drone solar panel inspections. So we're going to cover lots of information together today, as well as putting the drone up and giving a live demonstration flying over some solar panels. And so whether you're an operations and maintenance team, a solar company, or just an owner of a commercial PV system or solar farm, make sure you stick around to the end of today's video, where I'm going to be sharing with you a free PDF download that talks a lot more about drones, drones and solar as well as the costs associated with these types of inspections. So hope you enjoy. So when considering using drones for your solar panel inspections, you must have the right equipment. So this is a DJI Matrice 210V2 drone with a Zemmuse X-T2 thermal camera. So there's lots of different models when it comes to these drones and cameras. So other models include a newer version of this called the M300. We also have older models you can use like the M200, uh, the M600, as well as you could sometimes even use uh, the first generation DJI Inspire drone. And they also have the SenseFly EB drone if you don't want to use DJI, although those, although those are a little bit limited for the type of in-depth inspection you can perform. And for the, the thermal cameras, you have really three main players. So we have the X-T2, which is what we have right here. We have the XT, which is a older model of the XT2, and then the newest model is the DJI H20T. So there's lots of different options out there. So it's best to do your own research and figure out um, which is best for you and for your budget. So to get the best data out of your infrared camera, there are a lot of weather conditions you need to be accounting for. So the first one being, you don't want to be flying two hours after sunrise and then two hours before sunset. So because of the sun being so low on the horizon, the, the differences in the temperatures that you're gonna be looking for in these faults won't be as great. Uh, so it's best to be flying around midday when the sun is at its peak. So the next tip is you wanna be performing your inspection when it is clear skies, with the exception of a little bit of scattered clouds is okay. And this is very important because if you do an inspection when uh, it is overcast, the differences uh, and the, the faults and then the normal operating areas of the panels um, with the thermal camera would be very hard to distinguish between them. Um, and it's also important to be flying with less than 60% of humidity. The third condition is wind. So you must be performing your inspection with less than 15 mile per hour gusts. This is very important because what happens is the wind will go over the panels and create a cooling effect and make it a lot harder for your infrared camera to distinguish the faults. And the last condition we're gonna be talking about is rain and snow. So you do not wanna be flying and inspecting your solar panels when they are wet or there's snow on them because uh, you will not get accurate results. Now we're gonna get into the live demonstration. So I just did all my pre-flight checklists, everything's a go. And so we're ready for takeoff. This is the PV system we're going to be looking at today. It isn't uh, quite too big, so we're just going to be flying it manually uh, just to get up you know, pretty close and uh, show you all the, the, the details. So we can just do a quick scan through these panels. And we can see a lot of cell level defects. And what's interesting is if we moved this drone, let's bring it down a lot lower, and did more of a side view angle, you can see all of these uh, reflections that are coming off right over here from the sun. So because it, it is a fully sunny day today, the reflections are from the sunlight are going off the panels and providing a lot of uh, mixed like data here. And a lot of these faults that we saw earlier are much harder to see. And it is also important to do this um, whenever, you know, if you are flying manually, when you see these faults, because it could even just be the sun's itself, its reflection um, in the panel. So it's always important to change the viewing angle so we have um, more, more uh, positions 
and we can better identify the problem. Let's get pretty close to this one issue at the top here. And I'll show you a pretty neat feature uh, that this X-T2 camera can do. All right, so we see that this panel has some issues. We can get even closer. And so, you know, we see this is a problem here, but we don't know exactly what is going on. So the great thing about the X-T2 camera and a few other similar cameras is it has the infrared camera and it also has the visible, like regular camera. So just by clicking a few buttons here, we can change the view to visible and now we can see clearly that there is actually a big uh, hole actually not even a crack right through this panel sometimes you can't really always see uh, those types of you know clear, clearly uh, defined issues right there so if we did a scan you know of going past all these panels with the visible light with the regular camera you know you really can't see anything that's going on here but then when we do that again just by switching this to a thermal right away we miss them right there and so a lot of these are cell level defects so you know these don't really justify a full panel replacement but it's good to keep track of these uh problems so the main issues that we are looking for during these inspections are the module level uh, faults and then the string level ones. So the module ones are just a single module is offline or just you know not working and the string ones is one entire rows of panels because they're because the solar panels are connected when you find these ones it is a big deal because that means that there is a major revenue loss that is occurring right now. Next we're going to talk about the height of your inspection. So how high you fly your drone really can get very different data. So there is different levels of inspection, so I'm not going to be giving you exact um, altitudes that you should be flying because it can always be different. Um, but a rule of thumb is when you are closer to the panels, you're going to get a lot more granule and much more detail um, from the entire inspection as a whole than being super high up. Uh, where you won't even sometimes find even the cell level defects because you're going to be so high up that the amount of pixels that are on um, your infrared camera won't be able to pick up those really small uh, defects. And when you are flying, let's say this is a rooftop system, so if you're flying a rooftop system or a, say, a carport where the solar panels are going to be elevated off the ground, you're going to need to factor the height of the roof into the equation. So let's say uh, 100 feet would be your normal altitude to fly a regular ground mounted solar farm. And now you're gonna be doing a rooftop and the rooftop is around 50 feet high. So you're gonna to need to be now be flying at 150 feet. So you need to account for that difference in the height of the rooftop and the solar panels. Your height can also vary depending on the, on the camera that you do get. So let's say, for example, the X-T2 camera, which is what I have, there are, are four different uh, millimeter lengths of the lens. We have the 9 millimeter, the 13, the 19, and the 25. So right here, I have a 19 millimeter. Um, and what that means is pretty much how zoomed in the camera uh, will be. So if you had a 9 millimeter, then it's going to be a regular camera, no zoom at all. If you have a 13, which is actually the best one for solar panel inspections, it's going to be, you know, a little bit more zoomed in. And up to the 25, it's going to be very zoomed in. Uh, so you, the two, the 13 is the best. Uh, you can definitely do these with the 19, which is what I do. But the 25 and the 9 uh, is really not recommended for solar panel inspections. And, uh, you know, depending on the type of camera, this is just the X-T2 camera, but it is going to be different for the other cameras that, whether it be the H20T or the Sensefly EB or the X-T, the original. 
Some of the major benefits of using these drones for solar panel inspections compared to a lot of manual uh, traditional methods, uh, one being the cost, because you won't really need as many technicians to be on site and the inspections can be performed much quicker and in some cases you know drones have been flying 50 megawatts of solar in one day and as well as you don't need to turn off the panels for the inspection which is a really big deal because um, you know throughout that entire day or possibly days that you're inspecting these panels they can be operating at their regular um, efficiency and you don't need to you know turn off all of them to conduct the inspection. I hope you all enjoyed today's drone demonstration. Make sure you take a look in the description of this video for a comprehensive article which goes over manual inspections versus drone inspections, uh, some case studies from the industry, whether you should have an in-house program or outsource it, as well as a free downloadable PDF which talks about uh, the costs of these inspections. And if you have any more questions about drones and solar, uh, feel free to message me on LinkedIn or to schedule a phone call with me on my website. And I appreciate you watching this video and I'll talk to you soon.